Hello everyone, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour here at loverugbyleague.com with me, James Gordon, joined as ever by Drew Derbyshire. We'll get this in early, he's not being ignorant yeah. and always been getting a bit of stick in the comments, but he does use his phone to check on your comments and read and reply to during the show. So um, on that note, please do comment and like and, and whatever if you want to chuck your opinion into the debate or if you want to talk, you want us to debate something in particular. We are sponsored by Betfred, thanks as always to Betfred for their support uh, of this show. Um, we're going to do the usual, we'll run through some news items from the week, we'll talk about a few burning issues in the game and then in the last 15 minutes of the show we'll look ahead to this weekend's games. We're every Thursday 12 till 1 for the Rugby League Lunch Hour, also available afterwards as a podcast, I think. Yeah. Um, to download via iTunes, Spotify, whatever. It's available on YouTube and we'll put it on the website as well. And of course, you can watch it whenever you like on Facebook as well. Um, I want to get this out of the way. So we'll talk about Amy McManus. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it caused, I, I, it caused I, a stir, didn't Yeah, I sort of feel like the whole weekend was consumed by this. Um, so I don't, want to, I don't want to drag it up again too much. But I think... I mean, it's an interesting one because, you know, yeah, you can, everyone gets annoyed, don't they, at, at decisions that they perceive to be incorrect. Um, but it's not a great look for rugby league, is it, when you've got a, an owner or a chairman of a club, like, properly laying into to something that is not easily fixable, is it? Like, you can't say... That you know, it, it it it's not something that you can put a plaster on and fix overnight. And and when Super League are looking for commercial broadcast partners, whatever, it's not a good look, is it, to have a a prominent no. club chairman? Uh, I can't I can't believe what I read uh, when I, when he arrived <coughs> at Saints because I was covering the game for Love Rugby League. When he arrived at Saints and sat down and guys walked from the mirror and said, "Have you read him at Manchester's program notes?" And as soon as I opened it. Um, I read the first couple of paragraphs. I was I was stunned to be fair because it was a very very uh, well written piece. Uh, so obviously it's not just been written in the heat of the moment. It's it's been written and it's been thought through and it's been read through a couple of times. Um, and you, and you could tell that with the way it the, the piece was written. Uh, I just think it's it was a bad look, wasn't it? And it comes across as so great. Even if it wasn't so great, mm. it just it comes across as though uh, <laughs> Saint Helens are sore losers. In effect, because uh, of Amy McManus's comments, I think it it was it was out of order mentioning that um, Hicks confronting a fan who sent him a death threat yeah. on a social media was a, a publicity stunt. So that that was the the point of of the uh, of the piece that stunned me most. To be fair, not necessarily the the Robert Hicks officiating at Wembley because we, we all criticise referees, we we all mm. criticise players. Um, as I've said on the on the show a couple of times before, referees can be criticised. I've got no problem with them being criticised, but there's a pro- there's a, a difference between being criticised and being abused. Yeah. Um, but I think McManus was out of order with his comments. But then to first of all put that out, then the RFL reply with a statement of their own on Saturday morning, uh, saying that they don't condone McManus's actions, uh, etc. And then on Sunday morning, McManus responds with a second statement, just re- reiterating his comments, saying that he's looking forward to a response from the RFL compliance team. Uh, I think I just think the the whole weekend, as you say, it was it was just uh, a bit of a sour note for the sport because. I said I said this in in the press box at Saint Helens on Friday night. This. This is the kind of stuff that I was going to say for where that. This is the kind of stuff that makes a sport just look a joke at times. And th- because you won't have this in any other sport, mm. any other professional sport, you won't have this. The interesting, the interesting thing is obviously that that column would have gone to print maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, and in the program, wouldn't it? For for them to get the program printed, it'd have gone in Tuesday, Wednesday. So they've been sat right. waiting for this to blow up since then. Uh, I mean, I think. It's very, who said match their programs with that? Well, yeah. Um, I mean, the thing for me is, it's like, well, it's all right criticizing referees and and whatever. But what's the solution? The solution, surely, the only solution is to invest more money. And you know, one obvious comparison is this year we've had Super League breakaway from the RFL. They've brought in a new CEO who's on a few hundred grand a year. Well, 
could that few hundred grand a year not being used on other things? Because so we've not really right. seen... But, but, you but, can't tell me that Super League's any better off this year But with, all, of with all the fact that referees are taking as well at the moment, uh, we're running a fine risk of um, just not attracting any referees whatsoever because what happens if, if up-and-coming referees, referees for the RFL who referee maybe under 16, under 18, open-age games who are on the brink of maybe making that step up to semi-professional or professional refereeing, uh, they might just decide to walk yeah, away from the sport point? because yeah. you've got to think the amount of abuse that Robert Hicks has suffered over the last two or three months has been horrific. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 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 you must applaud him because even him going on social media that after every single game there'll be at least one person giving him abuse. There will. Yeah, yeah. And, and obviously it's, it's easy to say like him and McManus did it's easy to say not be on social media at all um, but it shouldn't be... Uh, it I mean, be a I mean, it, for, it's for not, and I suppose it's not just a rugby league problem, is it? It's a societal problem. You know, we've seen in, in football, there's a lot of players starting to get racist abuse and stuff yeah. on, on Twitter. And, well, um, to, to be it's, fair, it's a problem in general, isn't it? And I, and I don't mean to to to, to come across as I, I don't know the racist abuse in football has been happening for years. And I'm not uh, on on social media, yeah. uh, and I, I just think Sky Sports has. Has, pit, or has only started to pick this up now, and I don't know why they've only just started mm. to pick this up, um, because you 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 see a lot of online uh, racial abuse in, in football, um, and I'm not I'm not saying it's acceptable because it's completely not acceptable. Uh, I think I think social media platforms should do more and should implement more um, things to to stop a, a racial abuse on social media as well. Um, and I'm not just saying it happens in football; it probably happens in all sports, but I've certainly seen it. Uh, in previous years, in happening happening in football, um, and I think I think the likes of Twitter should do more instead of just having be anyone being able to create an account with a, a football club uh, avatar as oh, the yeah, icon yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, it, have no names. You know, yeah, people who people who sort of hide behind anonymous accounts do my head in. Um, <clears throat> moving on from that, then from you've got your own personal fan of it, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what was it called? Bush Battler. Bush Battler, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, he loves it, that lad. Well, um, a woman, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, it could be... It might be gender fluid. It might be gender fluid. Possibly. Um, might, be, might be sold in your local garden centre, Bush Battler. Well, maybe. Um, so, moving on from that, let's talk about... We'll move on from abuse and uh, all that sort of blabber. I, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I don't see much point in it. The Great Britain 29-man squad that was announced, or the training yeah. squad, or performance yeah. squad, whatever they're calling it. Um, I mean, <laughs> we seem to have more squad announcements than we have games in yeah. the National Rugby League. I mean, you've got the England performance squad, you've got the England Knights performance squad, you've got the Great Britain squad, you've got the Great Britain training squad. The only play, England aren't even playing this year. You know, even Great Britain are only playing four, and it's like, it's just ridiculous. I mean. You've got all this big story about, oh, Philbin's in it and Ash Hanley's in it and whatever. And it's like, but he's not because there's at least, what, probably 10 players yeah. that are playing in the NRL that will waltz into the Great Britain squad. Yeah, and, and obviously it's a 29-man squad, but and it's got to be comprised to 24-man squad. Yeah, so, as gonna, well as the, the, yeah, so the you're looking at maybe NRL 15 guy. of that 29-man squad aren't going to be going. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, what a wasted sign. It, well, <laughs> it is an absolute yeah, wasted sign. I think going off the squad, I think Zach Hardacre will be, will feel hard done to for sure. Uh, I think. Has, fact, it, has, like, it, has he been asked whether he'd been asked to be considered? I've not seen that anywhere. I well, why, why wouldn't you? Well, I, don't, I, mean, I, I mean, I don't Liam know. Farrell. Uh, I think he's been a little. I bit think. Far, I think the thing with Farrell is we've got so many good back rows. You know, Whitehead, Bateman. Burgess. Yeah, but Stevie Wall's been picked for Leeds. Well, he's, not, he's not playing. Yeah. He's not playing, has he? Mm. So, what? I mean, they're, they're certainly, you know, I mean, like, I like Philbin for Warrington, but I, I don't think he's great Britain quality. I think he's got potential, Philbin. Uh, I think, obviously, I think I think anyone would take um, Zach Hardacre over Jamie Shaw, who's been named. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, but, then it, but then, like I say, is the heartache a thing and I think more of a case of it's not about his ability on the pitch, it's more because of the misdemeanours he's had on the on international duty in the past? Possibly. Um, 
Possibly. But it's uh, a waste Regan of time, isn't it? Because but Regan Grace as well. I was, I was surprised not to see Regan Grace in the squad. Uh, as, as Almost like he's a token Welsh. Welsh player. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. And uh, I think I'd have him over. Especially because they, they rolled him out for the Great Britain launch press conference, didn't they? they? Did, yeah. And you're saying that he's basically not in now the top 40 Great Britain players because that's what you're basically saying, aren't you? Because there's 29. They've said another couple who were injured. Who that, that's all disrespect to Jamie Shaw or... Actually, no, by the way, no, no. that would be my preference in the, in the side. Um, if he was making a 1 to 13 now for Great Britain, who would it be? Oh, Coot. Well, we did it, did we not do this in the office? Yeah, we, we did, did. Coot, McGilvery, McGilvery, Macon, to near wingers. Yeah. Or Ryan, well, I mean, I, I'm not no, saying, I can't Hall, see Hall's not playing much for, for the Roosters. Um, centers was, we had issues with centres, didn't we? Because we were a bit like, well, Watkins probably ain't going to make it. You wouldn't imagine. But then, do you play Bateman? Gildar. Gildar. Percival. Percival is Percival, isn't it? Percival, maybe. Percival's yeah. in, I think. Um, but, I, but I'd, play, I'd go... I mean, you'd imagine Austin's going to play half-back, but I would probably Jake go... Connor? I'd probably go... Yeah, Connor would play Connor at centre, I'd say, yeah. Connor. Connor and... Connor and Bateman. Okay. Go so Conor and Bateman centres, Williams with it, your halves, mm. Burgess. No, Johnny Lomax. Burgess, Hodgson, Graham, your front row. Whitehead. Which Burgess? One of Tom or Hodgson. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. Back row? Back row, probably, obviously, Whitehead. And. Sam Burgess. And. At least forward. You you want me to say more? <laughs> Sean O'Loughlin, uh, and then the, but then you've also got Ryan Sutton who's impressed in the back row for Canberra this year. I mean, you've got to look at this. You've got to you've look got at Luke the Saints. Thompson, you've got to look at yeah. You've got to look at the Saints. Yeah, you've got to look at yeah. Morgan Knowles. You've got to look at the Saints. Who's going to be Hodgson. Oh, but I think Daryl Clark. You know, I think Daryl Clark. You've got, Clark, Clark, you've got yeah. Robbie. I don't. I think. I think he's probably got. I don't think Robbie was brilliant for England at the World Cup, wasn't he? Yeah. But I think maybe, you know, when you're looking ahead to the World Cup, I know it's England and Great Britain. I know Great Britain and England are different, but ultimately Bennett's, you know, he's looking at England, isn't he? I think you'd maybe think, is the 2021 World Cup too far away for James Roby? You know, it's another season well, after this. Well, you could say that about Sean Auckland, though, but do you not pick the best team that you've got now? Well, well, well I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I never quite understand this theory of, oh, well, we want to get players in so that we're good in three years, because, like I say, you want to be good now. Um, yeah, well, it, dep- it depends. It depends on that. What well, I think, I think for the Great Britain tour, I think you you pick what's best now because you just want to, you you want to beat the Aussies, don't you? Uh, eventually next year, yeah. when when the Ashes uh, is so, played. So, so this is something that's being raised a little bit on Twitter this week. Is um, if if for instance we well if great well I mean Australia are going to play England next year, aren't they? but we don't know. But let's say Great Britain beat Australia at some point in the near future. Has that achievement been devalued by the fact that Coot and Austin are in the <sighs> team? Say this. Um, I'd say no, because I think the, the, they are representing their heritage. And it could easily be said, Tonga beating New Zealand at the 2017 World Cup. Um, Jason Tomalolo, mm. born and raised in New Zealand, playing mm. for Tonga. One of probably the best forward in the world. Could, could the same be but, said but, about but would you but would you say but the thing with Tamalolo is he's he's chosen to play for a weaker nation or a perceived weaker nation in Tonga whereas I think the argument that people are putting in and I don't necessarily I mean I'm, I don't really have an opinion either way on this but I think people are saying that if Coote and Austin were good enough for Australia they'd play for Australia they wouldn't have been playing for England and Scotland or whoever and I think that's the thing I think yeah. that's the thing that people are more you know, like, it's, 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 you know, it's like people people compare it to the cricket, don't they? Like obviously Ben Stokes is a Kiwi, but he plays for England. But he's chosen to play for England when you know it's not a case of he couldn't get a game for New Zealand, so he's had to play for England. Do you know what I mean? And that's the difference that I think a lot of people, you know, Kevin Peterson, another example. I mean, the England cricket team have got a load, haven't they? Where Owen Morgan? Yeah, they've chosen, to, but they've chosen to play for England. It's not been a case of. Oh, I'm not good enough to play for a team or country X, and I'm going to play for them. So, I mean, I, I look at Austin and I think, is a standoff really what 
you know, is Austin going to make is Austin that much better than George Williams or Gareth Widdop that he deserves to be coming in at twenty eight into the squad as a you know? Because let's let's face it, he's been in Warrens he's been at Warrington for what a year less than a year. And all of a sudden he's playing for England. Well, why wasn't he considered for England last year? The year before that, the year before that. Well, I did, I did read a report a couple of weeks ago, and, and it was it was dated back from maybe 2014, 2015, where he, he did outline that he wanted to play for England. So I don't, I don't see why he wasn't picked. Well, I mean, a the, I mean, years the, ago when the, Chris Hinton were picked. I think the other issue Chris you've got McLean is the other issue you've got is obviously the NRL's attitude to the international game is a lot different, isn't it? So it's like the clubs are a lot more reluctant to release play. You know, like so if you're having an England training week over here or a mid-season test if Austin was playing in the NRL they wouldn't let him come over for it um, and it, it, I suppose even I'd imagine that clubs are sometimes reluctant even you know for them you know if, you, if you've had a bit of a knock all year and they're like oh I'm going to fly to England and play in four or five test matches are they going to be like well oh, that's a bit right they didn't because mm. it's, it's, I suppose it'd be a lot easier for them to tell Blake Austin that than it would be to tell James Graham say, because obviously Graham has come from England anyway, so when he signed, they knew that's where he was. True, true. I, I can't understand both sides of the argument, but I'm, I, I really don't mind heritage players. Honestly, I, I don't. Obviously, we've seen it a couple of years ago as well, but obviously it was it was kind of on the other foot where it was tier two to tier one with a petrol sub and receiver. Uh, obviously, he, he was born in Fiji, became a Kangaroos legend. Uh, played a lot for, for the Kangaroos. I know he, he finished his international career with Fiji in 2013, I think it were. Um, but we, it's it's not it's nothing new. We, we've seen Chris Ironton play for England mm. before. We've seen Chris uh, McQueen play uh, for England before. We've seen Rangi Chase play for England. Mari Farson Blue play for Great Britain. There's been, there's been a big deal made about Lachlan Coote and Blake Austin, uh, but it's nothing new. Mm. We, we've seen it before, and I think. Lachlan Coote's probably the best fullback in Super League at the minute. I know he's got a couple of <laughs> a couple of critics from his, his performance at Wembley. Um, but I think him and, him and Zach Hardacre are the best fullbacks in Super League at the moment, hands down. Uh, and if, if that's what Wayne Bennett thinks, that's, that's what he thinks. I see uh, uh, Scotland coach Steve McCormack has lent his support to Coote and said, well, Coote's shown his commitment by playing the three, or four, coach. The three or four times that he's played for uh, for Scotland. Show that he, he, you know, he's committed to that cause. Well, yeah, Phil Wilkinson put it out, and uh, I think Mike Critchley put it out on the Central Star as well that Coote actually lost money when he represented Scotland in twenty sixteen, um, which obviously shows his commitment to represent his heritage. Uh, and it's not, it's, he's not just putting his hand up to represent Great Britain now. He actually wants to rep. He, he's previously wanted to represent Scotland, he, which is a. He didn't play at the World Cup, did he? For, I don't know why. No, but he, he did play. I think he was injured in twenty seventeen. Uh, I think he was down to play, but I think he, he was injured in twenty seventeen. Um, but he played in the twenty sixteen Four Nations, and obviously I remember the eighteen all draw against New Zealand up yeah. at uh, Workington Towns. Do at Park, he, he put a man of, man of the match performance in that, uh, and. Steve McCormack, who's a who's a top walk anyway, says that uh, Coote was uh, excellent around around to have in camp. Uh, so fair enough, fair play, and he'll, he'll have plenty of experience to England. And I, and I don't think uh, to Great Britain, Britain, sorry, to Great Britain, Britain, sorry. And um, I think I think some of the Great Britain players will appreciate having him and Blake Austin yeah. and Sean Auckland and Sam Burgess around. We're uh, we're a third of the way through the show, the Rugby League Lunch Hour here at loverugbyleague.com. We'll go into the comments. Please do leave your comments. And I am, I am reading the comments. I'm not just texting yeah. my mum saying put fish fingers in oven for tea. <laughs> um, Jason Pilmore says, Afternoon, guys. Afternoon, Jason. Uh, Kevin Gino Grinelli. Oh, what a name that is. My concern is that Rochdale on it's been on minus 844 points difference. And with the final game of the season against Bradford Bulls, we could be relegated to National 1 with... Over, over minus 900 points difference, that is a likely outcome and doesn't represent the club in a great way, does it? I've, s- I've seen a few things about Ro- I've seen a few comments about Rochdale. Um, I-, I was reading. Um, I do feel for them because. Because the, fa- the fan owned, aren't they? And obviously, yeah. they, you know, you go there and, you know, the fan numbers just aren't there. They've been whipping boys the last couple of seasons. They maybe would have been better off 
had they gone down last season. Um, obviously, Matt Callan came in maybe, what, a third or a quarter away through the season has not had any luck really whatsoever. They've been um, a couple of players have moved on from Rochdale. Yeah, and they've, they've, not, they've, 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 been, they've been poor this season. But, you know, you've just got to you go down and you start with a clean slate. Don't well, I, but I, I was looking at our predictions that we made earlier on, before the season even yeah. started, Jim. And I think me and you, admittedly, I think we... We we put Rochdale to finish maybe ninth. Well, maybe we thought eighth, we thought because like Rochdale that. had recruited some experienced players like they had Scott Moore, they had Paddy Flynn, they had Sean Ainsco. I thought they would do okay, but I think certainly I saw Rochdale a couple of times at the start of the season and they were just an absolute mess. The the player, you know, Scott Moore was playing standoff, which was ridiculous. They had mm. Tyler Whitaker was playing fullback. They were just like they had too Shaft. many square pegs in in round holes. They were they weren't fit enough, and I just think they never really got going. You know, obviously, you know you look at you look at how Swinton have progressed over the season, and you know maybe it's probably the right time Swin- for Rochdale to step down and then see. Swinton are doing good things off the field, though, aren't they? As well, we'll we'll come on to the Manchester rebrand in a little while, James. But mm. the, with the media and marketing, they're doing things the right way, especially with the budget they've got. Whereas, obviously, teams in and around them who te- not just Rochdale, teams who are similar size to Swinton and who've got the fan base of Swinton aren't really doing that and they're, they're losing fans yeah Swinton are at least Swinton trying are really to yeah. slowly gaining fans yeah, they're, they're it's trying very to... slowly but surely but the, 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 the gate's on the rise yeah and, and you know they're getting, they had a few fans they had you know away fans at Witness last week I was at the game there I mean you go to Swinton and it's a you know it's a decent you know it's an old ground but it's nice that if you, if you get a chance to have hospitality at Swinton it's an excellent Sort of behind the post, they have like a, there's like a lounge upstairs where they do like three course meal and stuff. And I've been there a couple of times because I know one of the directors, and it's you know really good. It's always packed when I've been there, so that's a good revenue uh, generated for them. I think we might as well talk about the Swinton thing now. It, the big thing that's come out this week, if you've not seen it, Swinton they're going to rebrand to Manchester Lions, subject to RFL approval. Um, two side, the two sides of this argument are that the Swinton board have basically said that they've been propping up the club um, to move forward. They feel like becoming Manchester and using the Manchester brand or name is, is stronger for the club. Um, also, that obviously, they don't play in Swinton. They haven't played in Swinton for 27 years, so it's very difficult to build a new fan base under a name that has no real connection to where the club play. But then on the flip side, you've got the Swinton fans who, you know, maybe third or fourth generation fans who are saying, well, hang on, Swinton's been around since 1866. It's not our fault we don't play in Swinton because we have the ground sold from under our feet. Um, you know, why this change? And I think I can see both sides of that argument. I, I'll start off with this. Is I just sort of think rugby league almost shoots itself in the foot because you're going to... Whether you agree or disagree with the Swinton fans, ultimately, some of them are going to be alienated by this change. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm unconvinced that change into Manchester will make a significant difference. I don't think it's as simple as that. I think there's a lot of things that need to fall into place for you to be able to do that. And I think rugby league's obsessed at the moment with this hypothetical, you know, hypothetically, rugby league's the greatest game in the world. It's the richest game in the world. It's got the most sponsors. It's got the most TV deals. But the reality is it's, it's, it's not. the best website. Yeah, league.com. Because, because it's like, oh, well, if we become Manchester, it's all ifs and buts. It's like, if we become Manchester, we're going to get more money. We're going to get more sponsors. We're going to get more commercial. There's no... I don't think there's any real concrete evidence that that's true because there are Manchester branded teams in other sports that struggle just as much as Swinton struggle. Yeah, I, I understand both sides of the argument again, I, but I think Swinton have got to do this. Fair play to Andy, Andy Mazey, the chairman, and the, and the rest of the board at Swinton for propping the club. We all remember what what state and what mess they were in just a couple of years ago before Mazey came in. Uh, they were really struggling. They, I, I thought at one point that they were going to go go completely bust, um, and they've they've turned it around. The media marketing is on point for the size of the club. They're doing decent things on the field. They're not whipping boys anymore. They're doing decent things. They're upsetting big teams in the, in the championship. But I think they've got to try this because there's only so much money that Andy Mays and the rest of the ball can can throw at Swinton because. They're not gonna. They're not gonna be there forever, are they? That let's face it. Mm. They're, they're not gonna be. At, they're probably well. They're probably not gonna be at Swinton in 10, 20 years, are they? Well, they I think that's. Be. I think that's part of the problem. But is obviously they need not to prop the they, club they, up. They, in a, so so they're in a, 
a stable financial position. The problem you've got is they've not, effectively, the people who are probably tied into Swinton are all probably 40 or over. Because ultimately, yeah. it's, not played, it's not been in Swindon yeah. for 30, nearly 30 years. And I think that's part of the issue you've got. Um, I think my, my, my view on it is that, you know, I know what you're saying about Swinton dying, you know, or that's the alternative. But I almost think that some of the fans would almost see that as like, well, I'd rather that happen than this happen, if you know what I mean. Because to them, it's going to feel like it's died anyway. Now... I would flip this around and say, you know when Manchester Rangers wanted to come up into League One? And obviously it was said no. Is not a better is it not better to allow Swinton to just continue as they are and find their appropriate level? Have Manchester Rangers come in as the Manchester team and see how they go. I think surely that to me makes more sense because I think that's the problem we have is that we try and almost like artificially inseminate and grow teams where if we created, and it's a bit, it comes back around to the expansion thing. Are you really expanding if you're bringing in one team and taking one team out? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, well, are we basically saying now that if Swinton rebrands to Manchester, we're only going to have one Manchester team? Because surely, surely you want to maximise, you know, you look at football, there's football clubs everywhere. You know, there's football, even rugby union clubs, there's rugby union clubs everywhere. It's like, why do you need to kill off, you know, one, you know, and you, can, you can see the argument that other you know, other places, you know, like Witness, they could say to Witness, well, you change your name to Liverpool just to get that big city thing. But then, well, what about Witness? You know, what about, why can't, why couldn't Witness, say, have a team, you know, and it might be in the third, fourth, fifth division eventually or whatever, but just let them find their level instead of sort of alienating small fan bases just because you feel that having a, having a team called Manchester is going to make a load of money. And, and like I say, I, you look the, at other sports... It was in so, the press release, wasn't it, released by Swinton, that they've had a couple of chances to merge with other... Well, yeah, other we know that Manchester they, area they, over when Manchester Rangers came in, I know that they were told, well, your best option is to basically merge with either Swinton or Oldham or buy Oldham or Swinton or whatever. Um, and obviously they didn't feel that there was the value in that. And obviously you they, you, they know as well, Manchester Rangers knew that if they came in and said we want to merge or we want to buy Oldham, you're going to immediately annoy mm. all the fan base they've already got. You're going to annoy people who may be connected to the sport in some way. So, you know, you're going to hide into nothing doing that. Yeah, I, I, just, I just think they've got to do it though. Because, uh, but they but can't... I, my other argument would be, and obviously I, you know, obviously I do a bit of work in sports, there's a back, there's basketball team, there's ice hockey team, there's rugby union, whatever in Manchester already. Well, if it was all about having the Manchester name, why, you know, why aren't the basketball team or why aren't the ice hockey team bringing in loads of money? And I think it's a very, I think it's a very arrogant and um, I think it's a very not, I don't mean arrogant from Swinton. I think it's a, a rugby league arrogance that rugby league people seem to think that if we do this right, everyone's just sat there waiting for rugby league. But rugby league's got no right to be bigger than. Basketball has or our ice hockey has. Do you, do you know what I mean? And that's where I sort of think, you know, maybe we need to have a bit of a reality check with where we are in the food chain. Maybe so, maybe so. But I think it does have that draw, doesn't it? Because if, you, if you're speaking to someone who doesn't know really know the sports, it and does, you're advertising. But, but, Manchester Lions has got that appeal, it, whereas it does, Swinton Lions it, maybe doesn't. Yeah, I it? completely it, agree. Swinton sounds a lot more local. I completely agree, but you could say the same about basketball and ice hockey. You could say the same about football, the way football do it. Well, you know, football have teams, you know, Manchester teams like in Ashton or whatever, but they still have decent teams that, they still have teams that are followed by 400, 500 people, whatever. You know, and that, I think that's where I'm at, is I'm a bit like, well, I understand what you're saying that we don't, that you want the bigger names as well, but I just sort of think, well, it's a shame that you have to kill, it feels like you have to kill off existing names and teams mm. to get to that point. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a toss of a coin, isn't it? Uh, I, I, I respect. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I respect, creating a new team called Swinton's the way forward either. I, I've seen that that oh, one of the fan yeah, groups has yeah. has come up with that. Um, I, 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 I think, yeah, the perfect solution, and I'm sure the Swinton board would probably agree, would probably go along with this. The perfect solution would have been that the long mooted new stadium happened in Swinton, and they could be Swinton Lions playing in Swinton in a new ground that they owned, that they controlled the revenue. You know, and they had a bit. They could have a bit more of a go. Because I mean, don't forget, Sale Sharks are in the Premiership Rugby Union. You know, Sale's only a small, you know, parish if you like in Manchester, just like Swinton. Well, Swinton's Salford, but you, you get you get what I mean. It, someone actually said this to me the other day. 
if you look at the, and I'm, I'm not sure whether I agreed with them, so I'll see what you think. You look at the Premiership Rugby Union teams, it doesn't jump, the big city doesn't, it doesn't jump out at you that they're all in big cities. Like Bath, like Bath's a city, but, you know, is it big? Bristol, biggish city. Worcester, yeah, Leicester's a city. But are they like, you don't look at them names and think Exeter, you don't look at them and think, whoa, you know, big city yeah. teams, do you? Yeah. yeah, okay, they've got Saracens who, who are obviously traditionally, London, you've got Wasps who are traditionally London, I know they're playing in Coventry now. I just think we've got a big problem at the moment with in rugby league and all this hypothetical. And I don't think anyone actually knows. I don't think I've not seen anyone prove to me that well having a French you know, having a big French city team or having a Toronto or having a Manchester or having a Liverpool is actually gonna make a blind bit of difference when it comes down to getting money in. Which is what it's all about, surely. Sure, yeah. I'd like to think that in five years we in, in five years we're sat here and Andy Maisie and, and Manchester Lions are a coin in it in. I'd love to think that that's what's going to happen, but and I don't know if I'm being cynical or not, but I just don't see how it would how it's because it, there's so many variables and it's and a bit like the Amy McManus thing is that it's all right moaning about one thing, but the problem with rugby league at the moment is a collection of things. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. <laughs> uh, let's read through. Some right, Jesus had his choice. Twenty p's worth though. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Clifford says referees, the elephant in the room, heads in the sounds bars and onwards and downwards. Uh, Lewis Banks says. I re- think I think just to just to jump in on that one. The problem is, is what's the solution? If someone's got a solution to the refereeing problem, then you know you could make a fortune because I think the problem is it's all right saying it's all right you're saying you've got to stop criticizing. You can't. It's all right saying oh well we we should be able to criticize referees for making bad decisions. But it's like well the problem you've got is. That's not fixing the issue. Calling Robert Hicks or whatever isn't fixing the issue. And it's like, I don't think anyone knows how to fix the issue. Is it more money? You know, maybe, yeah, but where does that money come from? Well, I've, I've voiced my opinions plenty in the past. I think it's, I th- I'd be happy for the video referee to go because I think the, the video referee heaps a lot more pressure on, refer- on referees on the field and, you, you and say, off the field you, afterwards because... Like referring back to the Wembley because that's that's the the topic and the and the point. Um, when Robert Six didn't go to the screen for the Morgan Knowles um, effort in the opening stages, it was on the the two big screens in the ground, uh, which was BBC footage. They were all showing the same footage. They weren't showing different any different angles. They were all showing the same footage at half time. They were, sh- they were replaying it again and again and again. But you're not going to get away from that even if you don't have the video ref because the games are still going to be on TV, they're still going to be filmed. In, if, that, if that incident happens and there's no video referee, you stadium, still get that, af- you in, still get that no, after no, no, the no, game no. where he... You Same and Manus is still going to be like, well, that, that should have been a try. I, I don't think you would. Not, a, why, not as much not? because you wouldn't, you wouldn't have the coaches um, after the games in the, in the post-match press conferences saying it because they would have seen it at that point as well. Obviously, when, when um, Justin Albrook says he, he was a bit... Uh, uh, no, I think it was Morgan Knowles who said he was a bit old that he's trying to go to the screen. But at the time, Morgan Knowles didn't, didn't even celebrate that. Yeah, he didn't sit yeah. um, Like he, he just threw his hands up in the air, but that was it. And he ran back to, to his 30-metre uh, line until he found the 20-metre t- tap. I, I just think it would take a lot less pressure off referees um, if, if they just went with a gut decision... We 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 all we all have to just realise that referees are human. Humans make mistakes. Get on with it. I, Those I, are I think. Like if, if he gets a decision, if refer, Rob Robert X gets the the re, uh, decision wrong, yeah, criticise him. Say, oh, we should have done that. Should have. That that's it. I if think that, I, that I, it. I'd like I'd like to say I'd like to see the video ref just restricted to to offsides and groundings. Like it used, like it feels yeah. like that's what it used to be like. There's too many like obstruction tries and shepherding tries that are just like if the ref's not seeing it in play, just, just let mm. it go. Yeah, um, um, I, I'd be I'd, I'd be happy for it to go, and I know why we have it now and to get every all the decisions. Well, 95 percent yeah, yeah, yeah. of the decisions right, um, but I, I'd be happy for it to go, and it made the games quicker as well. Uh, I think the games would end up being more entertaining. You won't get as much back, back chat from the players saying go to the screen or mm. look at the screen ref and all this. But, but I still think even if the games weren't on TV, they'd still have screens in the ground, surely, because that's part of the fan experience. 
in it. Bro, so probably I, blood. Yeah, maybe. Um, I don't, I don't, let, I don't let, I fans really both. Let's um, let's run through some. Um, oh, go on. Yeah, we're getting a couple more comments. Jason Pilmore goes back to the GB squad, says Bateman's not a centre. Uh, I think Wayne the, Bennett I think disagrees. We'll, well, I think Wayne the thing Bennett is, likes centre, I think the thing is it? with Bateman at centre. I think it's more of a case of defence. Well, no, but I also think it's a case of Wayne Bennett doesn't think he's got any. He hasn't got any centres that are a good enough standard mm. to go in the team. And just, put it, in. I think it's going to be interesting to see if um, Callum Watkins makes. The GB squad, or if he's in the starting lineup mm. uh, this autumn, because obviously he's been dropped by the Gold Coast Titans for the final game of the NRL season uh, this weekend. I think he's played five and might have played six games in the NRL mm. for the Titans now. Um, Vossi, the, uh, our, one of our favourite commentators, Michael Voss, said. Uh, Andrew Voss, Michael Voss. Uh, Andrew, Andrew Voss said um, that he was appalling last week. He got, he got dragged off in the first half. Uh, for Gold Coast, uh, he said, and that's probably something. why John Bateman should play at centre. <laughs> I'm sure Bossy said something like, um, it, "It might be his last NRL game." Yeah. It, it, so that that's going to be interesting to see how it pans out for Callum Watkins. Uh, hopefully, he can he can regain it, the the form that we we've, we've well, seen from him in like 2017, 2016. Uh, I got a couple more comments here, James. Uh, Jason also had take a leaf out of. Rugby Union for the way they ref. They are firm and get no back chat. They also don't call them by the name, which RL refs seem to be too friendly with the players. I think, the, I mean... It'd be, it, it'd be hard, that, though, because if you... If you how many referees are there? Well, it's just there's so many few teams, yeah. There's only 16. So, there's so many few, few refs and so many few... Like, few is it, I mean, in Rugby Union, I mean, yeah, OK, they've only got 12 in the Premiership as well, but they've got the European Cup and they can referee in Celtic League and all that, but... Lewis says, well said, Drew, been the video ref. Uh, I'm confident in our refs and realise they are human uh, mistakes happen. Let's um, let's um, go. Um, is that it? Uh, uh, Jason also says that NRL is different. He's smashing it in the in the back row. He's, he's not smashing it in the back row, Jason. Um, Who's that, Watkins? Yeah, I, th- I, think he, I think he's on about that. Um, he got dragged off last week. Um, we'll see. So. Um, let's just run through some news items. Um, former Hull KR coach Tim Sheens is being linked with the Newcastle Knights. Interesting one there. Um, Matty Lees is out for the season. He's had uh, emergency surgery on his abdomen. Yeah, that, that sounds, sounds like a, a horrific injury, doesn't it? Uh, that would be put you in sort of some discomfort. I think he got. He left the field against Leeds, didn't he? In, it, it's in not something. It, it, it's, and, uh, so, it's something that. Didn't um, think much of it. Saint Helens at first. It's something, something that you'd have to get forward. right before you come back to action, certainly. Wouldn't it? Yeah, and with it, it was interesting because with the press release that Saint, Saint Helens put out this morning, he said uh, he'll be doing all that he can to pull on a Saints jersey next year. So that that sounded like it might be a little bit worse than maybe what we're... And obviously bad luck for Saints. I've said Wormsley with with his neck injury, he was out for a long course, time. Yeah. And, um, and, 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 it's, it's a blow to Matty Lee because speaking of the Great British yeah, squad, obviously the RFL said that, that he would have been picked for the Lions if he had been fit. Uh, so it's a, it's a blow as well. He's only 21 as well. We'll talk about Catalan. So, um, oh, Jason said he's on about Bateman in the back row. Yeah, yeah he's killing it in the back row. Bateman's having a fantastic um, season. We'll talk about Catalan. Uh, Bernard Gosch has come out. Um, a few interesting things. He's basically had a go at a few of the players that are leaving, most notably Tony Gijo. Um, he's praised Sam Tompkins and Mickey McLaurin and said how critical they are to Catalan and that's been shown by how poor the Dragons have been while they've been banned. And then he's basically said that he's going to give McNamara a contract extension as well. Um, can I, we've talked about this in the office all week. Gijo, for me, I, I, he's one of them players where yeah he's a bit hot and cold and you can see that sometimes he could be a bit of a hot-headed type player. But if I was the best player at a team or if I, you know, I... Gijo, you could make the argument Gijo's the best French player there is at this moment in time. Best French player? Yeah. He's not best at Catalan. No, no, but the best yeah. French player. And he's full back at Catalan, he won the Lance Todd Trophy, he won the Challenge Cup, and then off Catalan go and sign Sam Tompkins. You know, if if that shoe's on the other foot, if, if Sam Tompkins is at Wigan, and they go and then sign a big Aussie full back, you know what I mean? I mean, let's, let's just pretend that Tompkins doesn't want to play at six. But you know what I mean? He'd feel like his nose was put out. Yeah. And I can see why Gijo feels like that. Yeah, right. I, I can. Uh, we, we've said a couple of times, haven't we, to each other, that I, we, we can't see why 
um, Catalan signed two players last season, Matty Smith and Sam Tompkins, because they had Gijo, uh, they had Lange players in the Drink arms, Lange, uh, Lange's been, it, been out in the centres, they had Drinkwater and obviously, but they signed Matty Smith before. Well, they're because, trying to correct that, because we think signed. Smith's going to go when we think Drinkwater's going back there. Yeah, though. well, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little merry-go-round with Josh Drinkwater well, again. Well, 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 or could, or could um, Luke Gale move to Castleford and Drinkwater move across to, Castleford, to Castleford? Yeah. Castleford? Well, uh, obviously, Drinkwater is one of three players to look at. I've confirmed we'll leave at the end of the season. James Green will do. I think it be a decent pick-up for someone. And uh, Chris Atkin also leaving no care. Atkin has since signed for Salford already. That was long speculated. It looks like... Salford are going to have Kevin Brown and Atkin in the arms next year. Well, well he's there. Yeah, well, he's well. there uh, for, for next season. So, at the minute, you, you're probably looking at Atkin and Hastings as it is. Obviously, we expect... How many Hastings you got? Who did I say? Who did I say? Atkin and... and Brown, Kevin Brown. Well, here. No, no, not Brown. Lower here. Lower here and, and Atkin at the time being. Uh, Ak, uh, Hastings is going to Wigan. Um, we expect Matty Smith to move on from Catalan called Matty Smith. Go back to Salford. Oh, I don't know, they've um, got enough, haven't they? You'd think they're. You'd think for Matty Smith's next destination. Could Matty Smith end up at Castleford? Could he end? Uh, you know, if Gale goes to Leeds. I don't, I don't think he's quick enough for Castleford's style of play, if I'm honest. Um, would, could, would, would Huddersfield have a look at Matty Smith? 